Carol Ann is the CEO and the founder of Indigenomics Institute um, and the Global Center of In Indigenomics. And it's such a pleasure to have you here joining us uh, for this discussion. And so I'll pass it over to you. Thank you so much. And thank you for the warm welcome today. Um, I really appreciated the um, land acknowledgement and the uh, recognition and upholding of Indigenous perspectives in your agenda. I think that is such an important uh, question of describing your relationship to the land. So thank you for framing this conversation and gathering um, today in such a significant way. Um, so as the founder of the Indigenomics Institute and the Global Center of Indigenomics, um, I bring today a perspective around um, the integration of Indigenous knowledge systems and its significance to this discussion. I come from the Heshkwiat Nation and the Nuchanoth region um, near Tofino, BC, and as a Nuchanel person and a descendant of 10,000 years of the potlatch system of ceremonies that reinforce um, indigenous economic uh, knowledge systems on the land and around our relationships. In saying that, I think to be able to, um, sorry, I just also wanted to mention, I'm signing in from Victoria, uh, BC today in Lekwungen territory. So a little bit um, early still here. I wanted to, in beginning to reflect on, in a global sense that when we look at the entirety of the land base, 80% um, of the earth's biodiversity is managed um, or protected by indigenous people. So in having this conversation today, to realize the essential role of indigenous wisdom in advancing concepts and structures of natural capital systems, it's essential to be able to highlight and bring into focus concepts around connecting meanings of capital and economic success and how that has been experienced through an indigenous worldview. I authored the book Indigenomics, Taking a Seat at the Economic Table, which in itself highlighted Indigenous worldview, structures of responsibility, value systems, and knowledge systems. And while the book is um, leans heavily within the concept of Indigenous economic isolation, I think a lot of the concepts of um, understanding Indigenous knowledge systems and economic intelligence and concepts of economic success, the isolation of that and the distinction of that, while I referred to coming from 10,000 years of the potlatch tradition, to understand the structures of giving away of relationships, of gifts, and essentially centering those as a concept that primarily I want to be able to focus on today. That Indigenous economies have embedded within intrinsic immeasurable value. To put that simply, to realize essentially that our potlatch system is a system of giving, of recogni recognizing and upholding our relationships and responsibilities through ceremony. This concept of immeasurable value, when we realize what we say is that in our new channel traditions, because we are so ocean-based people, it is often said that when the tide goes out, the table is set. That the realization of our food systems and that directly as a construct of wealth itself to again advance this concept that Indigenous economies have embedded within them intrinsic and measurable value. I look to this concept of remembering. So in our potlatch system, there's a responsibility to remember what happened and to pass that down and to tell the story of why the relationship was upheld. The concept of return in value in itself is multi-generational. 
So what might happen within one generation of what is gifted and upholding in that relationship may be expressed in the next generation. To realize this multi-generational approach, the concepts of return, of value, of remembering, and of insurance are all established structures within an Indigenous economy. Again, it's also immeasurable. When we look to this concepts of capital, of value, how value is measured, it is important to be able to uphold and realize that while I express that within a new channel specific framework of Hishokishzawak, everything is one and interconnected. It's in that connection that essentially forms the foundation of human well being, accountability, and reciprocity to our ecosystem, to ourselves, to our, and to our future. When we talk about capital, especially from an Indigenous perspective, the concepts of exchange are essential. While we understand and operate primarily from a Western system of value creation, and essentially that concept of exchange itself is transactional in nature, I suggest that there are opposing concepts of development in play when we look from an Indigenous worldview of concepts of capital and a Western concept of capital. Indigenomics essentially lays out key principles of Indigenous worldviews. Foundational to that is respect, accountability, dignity, and multi-generational responsibility. These concepts of Indigenous values when applied to these concepts of capital in emerging structures of how we relate to our space, our place, and to each other. I like this concept of essentially that upon the connection of Indigenous peoples, or in lions, a Haudenosaunee spiritual leader essentially describes the relationship to the development of in the intersection between encountering Indigenous worldview and its intersection with mainstream economy. And he says, essentially, we don't value what you value. To realize that distinction, it's important to be able to realize in what is valued. Is it only value creation? Is it relationship and how is accountability and respect upheld within that? That is the space of distinction of Indigenous perspective. I essentially posit how we see the economy depends on how we see the world. Indigenous people view the economy as a whole, a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment of the earth and as an integrated web connected to the ecosystem of the whole. Through the Indigenous lens, the world reflects back to us reality as seen within our worldview. I refer to the work of my uh, new channel respected elder, Dr. Richard Atlio, who describes a phenomenon of things fall apart. In the quote, he describes, today, the experience of things fall apart has become a global phenomenon, particularly with respect to two crises, humanity's relationship with humanity and humanity's relationship with the environment. We are in a relationship crisis, a crisis of protocol, of relativity, connectivity stemming from a dominant global economic system, symptoms of our own worldview. It's in this space that I wanted to be able to reflect that essentially that Indigenous perspective, if we take one simple concept, that Indigenous worldview upholds the concept that what has spirit, what has value, it is in this space of the tensions of worldview where indigeneity itself describes a spiritual reality that everything has spirit, whether it's a rock, a mountain, or a glacier, or what we would call a resource in the ground.
It's in this space that when we begin to look at natural capital differently, to be able to ask in what are we looking at? How are we seeing or are we denying that what has spirit? I draw on the work of Robin Wall Kimmerer, author of Braiding Sweetgrass, who describes in her work that often we see in many indigenous languages, the word for plant itself is those who take care of us. It is in this orienting in our reality, how we experience what we are looking at, to realize that and build the respect and to be able to uphold our relatives that is in itself that concept that I referred to earlier, that everything is one and interconnected. In the work of Robin Wall Kimmerer, she essentially describes action on, on behalf of life transforms because the relationship between self and the world is reciprocal. It is not a question of first getting lightened or saved and then acting. But as we work to heal the earth, the earth heals us. It's in this space that we realize this concept of indigenous intelligence, that as we shift our lens of what and how we experience capital, what we measure, what we pay attention to, and essentially the outcomes that we are creating, the space for indigenous intelligence brings into focus this concept of reciprocity in relationships versus the transactional nature of what we know and experience. Second to that is systems of accountability. When we look at indigenous led legal structures that are through indigenous based populations, such as the emerging concept of the rights of mother earth, again, it shifts our lens from what is valued what is responsibility and what is accountability to think and realize that to understand that earth in itself as an entity and may have rights shifts from an extractive nature of looking at what is value or what is capital itself to indigenous reality the concept of capital as a holistic concept considering full wealth of resources it's in that larger spectrum of what is a resource and what is accountability and responsibility that we essentially begin to understand indigenous contributions to this evolving conversation and structure. To be able to bring into focus the concepts of regenerative or a multi-capital approach, I wanted to acknowledge that in hosting this conversation today, Indigenous worldview, there is much to be learned from it. There is, much, there is much space at the tables for Indigenous inclusion. While we look specifically to Canada, it's essential to understand that Canada was shaped and formed essentially on a singular truth of Indigenous economic exclusion. As we see that through the residential school system, through the reserve system, and essentially the Indian Act itself. It, in that itself, isolated indigenous concepts of risk management and of responsibility, while indigenous peoples see themselves as being gifted directly across thousands of years, the responsibility of caring for. With the onslaught of externalized regulatory environment, the isolation of risk management and responsibility polarized Indigenous experience, Indigenous wisdom, and Indigenous intelligence. It's in this polarization that the constructive nature of building a multi-capital approach, it is essential to bring into focus Indigenous intelligence. Again, I wanted to thank you for the invitation to come and spend time with you today realizing that as this perspective is building and advancing, I'm particularly interested in the integration of a Canadian government approach to the advancement of this conversation. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for including me in this conversation.